We're looking at the Pope, the Clintons, Matthew chapter 20, and two takeaways for us. Welcome to Interior Life, where we look at spiritual truths that help explain the very fallen world around us, help us grow into who we're created to be, help us to grow closer to the Lord. Thank you for making this time for the Lord. And let's open with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I'm recording this, 24 Sunday in Ordinary Time, our gospel reading is Matthew chapter 20. Jesus is telling the parable of the wealthy and generous landowner, and he hires laborers at different times of the day to come out and work on his property. And he pays them all the same. And that has the nose at a joint of the guys that started at the beginning of the day. <laughs> Why are we getting the same money as guys that just worked, at, say, an hour or two? And classic message here is to avoid jealousy and comparing ourselves to others. And, and the flip side of that, of the, the, the greatness and the generosity of God's mercy that we, we don't get what we deserve heaven forbid you know instead god just pours out his mercy on anyone who says yes anyone who shows up it has nothing to do with what we do to earn it we just say yes to the lord and the floodgates of grace open up magnificent we're gonna look at a little different twist of this though if we look at the first reading from isaiah that goes along with this isaiah says, seek the Lord where he may be found. And he also says from the Lord, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. In other words, don't start on your own agenda. Don't try to figure things out. Don't get clever here. Just seek me. Follow me. Keep this simple. And this can, we keep talking about this. This is the, the brilliance of the Catholic scriptural cycle as it connects with the liturgical season. In August, the, especially the Sunday messages were all about specifically our relationship with God in September. It's moving and expanding from that to our relationship with others that at times we should correct our brother or sister. We should always be ready to forgive and seek forgiveness. And here today, warning us against comparing ourselves with others, looking outward, getting all caught up in the world. And especially we have to be careful there with our own agenda and thinking we know what's best for us and our salvation and how to spend our time and so on. For example, we sanctify ourselves first and foremost in our vocation. And often we start looking everywhere, but yeah, okay, I'm a husband and father, but boy, they really need me at work. They really need me in this project in the community. They really need me in this ministry at church. Well, yeah, maybe, but we have to keep the main thing, the main thing. We first focus in our vacation. And then, then when we have that down, we have that rhythm of life, that pattern of life down, then God will expand our horizons. Yes, this is great. Now let's bring this out to whatever at work or in the community or in church. But we start with what God places right before us. And we let God lead us outward. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Everything else will be given to you. But we don't want to do that usually. We just want to go follow after this and follow after that in our own plan and agenda. Okay, this brings us to our cultural context for today, which is Pope Francis participating with the Clinton Global Initiative and having a number of meetings with Bill and Hillary Clinton and others of that ilk. And because it needs to be said in our current Catholic climate, for those that aren't aware of his uh, ongoing uh, dialogue of whether Pope Francis is Pope or not, I am not denying that he's Pope. He's the Pope. Uh, but as a human being, Jorge Pergoglio, and then especially the Vatican as a whole, and a lot of the other cast characters there are just going in all kinds of directions that I don't think are helpful for us. So we're going to look a little bit at this Clinton business and two really good lessons that we can pull out from this in terms of just our own life and seeking the Lord where he may be found and staying on the straight and narrow. The first one, as we have said, keep the main thing the main thing it's axiomatic in life what we focus on grows businesses know this athletes know this you probably know this but if you're gardening the, the plants that you focus on will grow the ones that you don't focus on will wither any other activity if you put your time there if, if it's playing a sport and you put your time into the practice and the drills and the training you will get better 
If you don't put in the time, you won't. Businesses, when do businesses go off the rails? This is the story of Apple. You start going down all different paths. You lose your focus on what your mission is. That's where Steve Jobs came in and got them redirected. And they took off and flourished again. That was the story of Rocky Three. For those who like Rocky movies, he gets all caught up in the celebrity and the stardom. <laughs> he gets clobbered. Then he gets back to training, you know, just like a tough street rat and he gets back in shape. This Vatican has lost its focus, particularly with all this climate change garbage. We'll get back to that in a moment. But it, that's a big part of their participation in the post participation of the Clinton Global Initiative, other things as well. But that's one of the headline topics. And this is absurd for this Vatican. There's climate change. It is simply just an excuse to hijack everybody's lives. There are plenty of scientists out there that are of the opinion that science has been completely manipulated just for political and ideological ends. Look, no one wants to put any more garbage in the atmosphere than they have to, but the global political agenda isn't about climate. And this Vatican, they look like a bunch of, of amateurs and dupes getting roped into all this. I saw this firsthand with all of the pandemic garbage that the Vatican played into as well. On a side note, it's really more than manipulating science to serve a political agenda. The point of climate change, the point of all the pandemic nonsense is that people are hungry for meaning. They want meaning, they want purpose, they want a cause, but they want it without sacrifice. And that's where it's so easy to hop on the hashtag me too business because it gives that momentary satisfaction. It scratches that itch for meaning, but it is so horribly superficial. It is so misplaced. And that's why it's galling to see the Vatican just go down this path. And meanwhile, what's happening? Rome is burning. Generations of young people are getting swallowed up by this culture, particularly by wokeism and transgenderism. But those are just the flavor of the month. Wait and see. What they are leading to is full-blown transhumanism. But here's the key. The reason people are falling into that right left is there's nothing else to take its place. There is a vacuum there. There is no faith and morals and meaning and purpose. If there was that, if we had those good, strong roots, there'd be nowhere for this wokeism and trans insanity to take root in people's lives. There is essentially no leadership coming from this Vatican, or sadly the USCCB, on these foundational issues of faith and morals. We're chasing after these absurd issues of pronouns and windmills and solar farms and whatever that have nothing to do with the core purpose of the church, which is, and this is a great irony, faith and morals. And because the church has dropped the ball on that, everything is falling apart. And this is where, again, it's completely backwards. Yes, the environment, we're meant to be stewards. That's like number 17 on the list. Get one through 16 right first, and then fine. If God is calling us to work on the environment, great. But there's way bigger fish to fry, and there's no grace. The tank is empty to fight the real evils at the heart of this, because where does grace come into the world? First and foremost, grace comes from liturgy, reverently practice from lives of holiness, lives of sacrifice, from strong monastic orders, praying and sacrificing for the world around them. All of that is being left to die on the vine while the church goes off and chases after climate change and every other absurd woke agenda. It's completely backwards. First things first, seek the Lord where he may be found. He's given the church a mission of faith and morals. Get that right. Get people formed right. Get the body of Christ strong. And then if the church is called, yes, also to step into the arena on the climate issue, great, fine, more power to them. But this is where this applies to our life as well. We have to focus on our vocation, that core mission that God has given to each of us. If it's married life and family life, that's being a spouse, being a parent, not outsourcing the raising of our kids to daycare. On a side note, I know that might be a painful one, especially perhaps you've already done that and now have the challenges that came from that and you wish you could get those years back. All I can say is you offer that up to God's mercy, invite him into that with great trust that he can heal and fix anything that needs healing and fixing. And then you have to let go of that. I know that takes a serious spiritual elbow grease to do that. 
but have great faith if you just keep offering that up to the Lord or, or any of the other mistakes that we do that we're tempted to dwell on. You know, we let go of the past, we trust that to God's mercy and we move forward with life. But we focus on our vocation, we seek the Lord where he may be found in that. And then if he guides us outwards, he guides us outwards. Second thing we can learn, choose carefully who we spend time with. Pick whatever words you want from. What comes to mind for me is sleazy for the Clintons. I, let's face it. Look, I don't know what's going on in their hearts and what they're they're truly responsible for or not, but their outward actions. Well, I just keep coming back to sleazy. I mean, Bill Clinton, the Oval Office and the blue dress. Who does that? He's redeemed himself hardly with Jeffrey Epstein. I, if you're trying to give up smoking and you go hang out with the Marlboro man, no, there's some pathological behavior there, deep pathological behavior. As far as the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton Global Initiative, well, the Clinton Global Initiative disappeared in 2016, just as Hillary's bid to be president died. To some people, that made it look like the Clinton Global Initiative was really basically a scheme to launder money through the foundation for political access to Hillary. At least that's what it looked like to some people with really thick glasses and white hair and a teeny tiny little YouTube station. So ask yourself this, when the Clinton Foundation just literally dried up overnight, no one wanted to give money to it. Why is it suddenly waking up now? Not gonna get into that here, but it's a good question to ask and wonder about. So here's this Pope waiting right back in with these people. Behind the scenes, is he preaching conversion to them? Maybe, I don't know, I'll leave you to think about that. This. Pope had no problem being very public with Trump, where he said anyone who focuses on building walls isn't Christian. He had no problem whatsoever being as public as could be. But with these people, the Clintons, that seem to be as dirty as can be, who are extremely insulting to Mother Teresa of all people, he's just all warmth and hugs. And the Mother Teresa thing, that was at one of the prayer breakfasts back in the 90s. That's when she said, you know, a country that will kill its own unborn children. I, what isn't it capable of? And the Clintons were there just stone-faced. And they wouldn't clap for her because she said that she dared bring up abortion in their presence. And a prior pope, he had no problem calling them out for this. John Paul II, on multiple occasions, he called out Bill Clinton. And the Clinton and the Democrats needed to change their position on abortion. That was a well-known point of friction between them, but JP2 wasn't going to leave that unaddressed. Why? Not just for abortion, but also for Clinton. He needed to hear that out loud. So Pope Francis getting all chummy with these people without seemingly the slightest concern for all these sleazy and questionable dealings leads to scandal is the ordinary word, a very bad representation of the church in the public sphere. What do we take from this? We have to be very careful of who we hang out with and how we respond to them. I say for myself, I, one little example, I can recall hanging out with a group of guys that were very creative with farm language, as, as they say, and I could easily get drawn into that. Not good. We need to spend time with people that will elevate us and be very careful if we're around people that are struggling in their moral life. And if, if on occasion we think God is calling us to be present, in all humility, but all truth, to help elevate people that are struggling in a certain area morally, then that's a very privileged place to be. And we have to deal with that very carefully, very prayerfully, staying close to the Lord and making sure that we are keeping Christ first and foremost right up front in that relationship. Here again is where these two things work hand in hand. You keep the main thing, the main thing, the main point of the church is the salvation of souls not how many batteries we're gonna import from China where they're strip mined out of the ground by slave labor, by the way. And so then suddenly you're all confused. You're hanging out with the Clintons. You're seeming to affirm everything they do, probably not in any way, shape or form in a meaningful way, challenging them to reform certain areas of their life. That's how it seems on the surface. So for us, the two things, one, keep the main thing, the main thing. Very careful if we're, we're branching out from that core mission that we have in life, our vocation, if we're married, our spouse, and our children, be very careful when we start branching out. Is the Lord leading us this way or that way? 
And then particularly then, as we get drawn more and more out in the world, being very careful of the people that we're around, that we're not getting dragged down, that we're there to bring Christ into the world unflinchingly. These two points, again, are very much the message of this Sunday's scripture in Matthew and Isaiah. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. The Lord will take care of that. If he wants us to play some tiny role, he'll guide us in the right time, in his way. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Seek him where he'll be found. Let him lead everything and follow close, close behind him. On a side note, in terms of living out of vocation, nothing serves that better than having a plan of life. You can get our free guide to that in the link below in cheerlife.faith backslash plan of life. So, blessings to you in seeking the Lord where he may be found, and I look forward to being with you again.